Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson is presented by Actistat, Adina Springs, Bloodstock Research, Breeders' Cup, Claiborne Farm, EmpireCityBets.com, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Keeneland, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, Paul Miller Ford, Quillen Leather and Tack, Shadwell Farm, Spendthrift Farm, Three Chimneys Farm, and Windstar Farm. Hello everyone and welcome to Thoroughbred Week, featuring a reform claimer who wins the Grade 1 Delaware Handicap and four graded stakes from Arlington Million Preview Day at Arlington Park. We begin with sprinting fillies and mares at Los Alamitos and the Grade 2 Great Lady M Stakes. Air Kitty, the 3-2 favorite, and Burgard has the call. And away they go. And Amaranth is the one showing the best speed, doing hard time again from the extreme outside. Came away running in second, followed by Sagebrush Queen in third. Trace Bell from down along the inside in Concave with Air Kitty back next to last. And the early trailer is clearly confused. And Dennis Carr has Amaranth, five-eighths of a mile to the finish racing, well off the rail as Trace Bell is now coming through from down along the inside. As Trace Bell is now up to force the pace as they make their way around the far turn, Concave is right there and so is doing hard time again to the extreme outside, it's just a length and a half off the lead. Now Eric Kitty begins her run on the outside of Sagebrush Queen and back at the end now is clearly confused. They make the way past the 3 8 Paul and Amaranth is trying to shake clear here, has opened up a two and a half length lead from Trace Bell who's now running in second to the extreme outside comes Eric Kitty who's moving up into third as they make the way on to the head of the stretch. And here comes Air Kitty to the extreme outside. Trace Bell's coming on gamely as well as Trace Bell is now up to a tackle fork of the command. Also right there as they make their way down the inside is Sagebrush Queen as Trace Bell comes up on the extreme outside. And Trace Bell's now coming on strongly here with a 16th to go, opening up a length lead. Trace Bell's now strong on the lead to the finish line of Amaranth is running in second, but it's going to be Trace Bell coming home to win here. Trace Bell doing hard time again, doing hard time again, a length and a half in front. 7-2 second choice, doing hard time again, sneaks by Amrath to score by a length and a quarter. Mike Smith aboard in 115-2. A three-time stakes winner last year, including the grade two Hollywood Oaks, the Jerry Hollendorfer trainee is sharp in her second start off a 10-month layoff. The four-year-old filly by Minister's Wildcat was bred in California by her owner, Tommy Town Thoroughbreds. Doing hard time again has earned nearly $709,000. Next, turf sprinters in the Grade 3 Parks Dash. Tight end touchdown, the 5-2 favorite, Keith Jones has the call. And they're off. Fans can't break sharply for the outside. Sharp sensation shows speed. Mongolian Saturday at the inside. Storm of the Century is also there with tight end touchdown at Atlantic Seaboard. It's a cavalry charge at the opening furlong. Mongolian Saturday. Tight end touchdown, sharp sensation, this ain't no bull for him across the track. Bold Thunder quickly charging up on the outside. After that comes Storm of the Century. Marchman begins to get on the outside from four lengths back. It's still three more to Ben's Catters, three wide. Ben's Catters about six back at the midway point of the turn. Atlantic Seaboard has dropped to the back of the pack, as has Mongolian Saturday. Field turns for home. Here comes Bold Thunder on the outside. Sharp sensation is there on the inside. They come down to the eight pole. Those two are headed in for the lead. Marchman on the outside is a driving third. Here comes Ben's Cat making his run on the outside. Tight end touchdown is in between horses. A wild finish. Here comes Ben's Cat on the far outside. Ben's Cat, could he do it again? Ben's Cat, it's close, but Ben's Cat's got it. Ben's Cat gets up to take the photo by a nose over tight end touchdown, who saves place by a nose over Marchman. Julianne Pimentel, the winning jockey in 56-3. Runner-up in the inaugural running in 2011, Ben's Cat takes the Parks Dash for the third consecutive year. After winning his first two starts this season, the King Leatherbury trainee finished fourth in the Grade 3 Jiper Stakes. The eight-year-old gelding by Parker Stormcat was bred in Maryland by KT Leatherbury Associates. Ben's Cat has won 27 of 41 starts and has banked $2.1 million for the Jim Stable. More racing coming up, but first, here's the upcoming schedule in the Breeders' Cup Win and You're In Challenge Series. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with turf fillies and mares coming up in this segment. But we begin with three-year-old stakes action presented by BC2A Paste. Reduce the likelihood of tying up with BC2A Paste. To Arlington Park for the Grade 3 American Derby. School of Hard Rocks, the 6-5 favorite, John G. Dooley has the call.
They're half mile in 48th and two fifth seconds. They have four furlongs to go in the 100th American Derby. And it's Ghostly Wonder still making the running here from our channel, who follows his every move as they round the far turn. He's in front still together with School of Hard Rocks with the fence in fourth now with under three to go. Affordable in fifth and five lengths off these leaders as our channel now makes a move coming toward the quarter pole. Highball is picking it up. Jock Galore, Divine Oath is in traffic. And Big Tom Prado is last as they come toward the top of the street. Stretch. Three quarters, one minute 13 and two fifth seconds. It's our channel. Our channel has first run for the final furlong. Our channel up by two. School of Hard Rocks in hot pursuit. Divine Oath affordable. Highball is staying on down the center of the course. They run big Tom Prado. It's our channel close to home. Here comes Divine Oath. Our channel, Divine Oath. Divine Oath got it from our channel. Seven to two, second choice Divine Oath by Pin Oak Stud Stag and Broken Vow. Rallies to defeat our channel by half a length. Florent Giroux aboard the Keeneland Sells graduate in 156 and two. One of his first two starts at Gulfstream Park this year, the Todd Fletcher trainee finished second to Mr. Speaker in the grade three Lexington Stakes before running fourth in the Pin Mile. The Colt was bred in Kentucky by Sanford R. Robertson and was a $200,000 Keeneland September yearling. Divine Oath has earned nearly $236,000 for Let's Go Stable. American Produce Records is now available online. Visit brisnet.com slash APR for unlimited access to the pedigrees of more than 3 million thoroughbreds for just $275 a year, now including SAR stats. To Parks Racing for Turf Fillies and Bears in the Grade 3 Dr. James Penny Memorial Handicap. F.E. Trinket at 2 to 1, a slight favorite over Assateague. Larry Letterman has the call. They head into the turn. Assateague continues to do good things, holding on three quarters of a length. Nelly Cashman inching a little closer in second. Rosario and comes Castellano getting busy on a Laura Michelle in third. As they move into the turn on the outside, trying to put a rally together is Nelly Cashman. As they come into the stretch and now to answer the questions, it's Assateague hanging on a length and a half. Dead aim on the outside is Alora and Michelle. They can't make any headway. In comes Nelly Cashman, who's flattening out. Way outside, appealing cat, looking for minor spoils. But Assateague got the lead in the beginning and strikes gold in the Dr. Penny Memorial. Assateague, the front running winner by two and a quarter lengths over Game Fair. Joel Rosario aboard in 140 and three. The first graded stakes victory for Assateague, who captured the De La Rose stakes at Saratoga last summer. The Michael Match trainee was coming off a close fourth place finish in the Intercontinental Stakes at Belmont Park. The five-year-old mare by Stormy Atlantic was bred in Kentucky by her owners, Helen Alexander, Dorothy Matz, and Helen Groves. Assateague has earned $398,000. Back to Arlington Park for the grade three modesty handicap. 7-2 favorite White Rose is well back as we pick up the call by John G. Dooley. Half mile in 50 and one fifth seconds. They go to the far side of the course. I.O. Ireland trying to make all. It's I.O. Ireland by a half length to I'm Already Sexy. Right there in a position to challenge with less than three furlongs to go. Every way, Kepi starts to move while four wide. Made on a mission is fifth. Frivolous a wide sixth. Gulsary is seventh and six lengths off these leaders. Ball group past the quarter pole. Alette Embar wide is to Breed. They've turned the corner in the modesty. Three quarters, one minute 15 and two fifth seconds. I'm already sexy, strikes the top from I.O. Ireland every way. Gulsary on the outside is Kepi Alette down the center of the course. Street of Gold finishing fast. It's a mad dash to the wire. I'm already sexy, Street of Gold. Here's Gulsary. I'm already sexy. Another four for Ron Giroux. Four to one, second choice. I'm already sexy. Takes it by a neck over Gulsary, who has a nose on Street of Gold for place. The third graded six victory on the card for Florent Giroux. Time of the race, 157 and 2. I'm already sexy as 4 for 4 over the Arlington turf for Giroux, including three stakes wins. The Wayne Catalano trainee was treated with Lasix after finishing second in the Grade 3 Mint Julep handicap. The four year old filly by Reddy's Image was bred in Kentucky by Equus Farm and was a $20,000 yearling. I'm already sexy has earned $372,000 for Hit the Board Stable. Florent Giroux with the Safe Ride of the Week, presented by Sally Horse Fans, the safest way to the winner's circle.
The Spendthrift Farms Stallion of the Week is the brilliant grade one winner, Shaking It Up, a spitting image of Midnight Loot and his star's top performer on the racetrack. New to Spendthrift for 2015. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with a photo finish and the Grade 2 Bowling Green Handicap coming up in this segment. We begin with the Grade 3 Arlington Handicap. War Dancer, the 9-5 to five favorite. Again, here's John G. Dooley. The half mile for Avanzari. 52 and 3 fifths seconds. Avanzari in front of the 4 and a half. Finnegan's Wake, right up there for Victor Espinosa, who keeps tabs on Avanzari as they head to the half mile pole. So it's Avanzari who charts the course in the Arlington handicap from Finnegan's Wake, still 1 2. Ward Dancer holds his spot at the rail. Mr. Mardi Gras is in touch. Then Infinite Magic and Admiral Kitten both biding their time in the backfield. It's Avanzari who's made every yard so far from Finnegan's Wake, but now three for longs from the winning line. Three quarters for Avanzari. One minute 17 and three fifths seconds. Avanzari at the quarter pole from Finnegan's Wake. Mr. Mardi Gras now getting that green light to go. Infinite Magic is four deep up the inside. Ward Dancer and Admiral Kitten looking to plow through between horses. They've turned the corner. It is Avanzari. Avanzari, Finnegan's Wake. Ward Dancer charging up the fence. Admiral Kitten with a late gain. They're coming down for the final 16th. And it is Finnegan's Wake. Admiral Kitten finishing fast toward the inside. Finnegan's Wake. And let's take another look at that photo finish. It's Finnegan's Wake taking the lead on the outside, under 117 pounds, and Victor Espinosa. Admiral Kitten is closing rapidly between horses, toting 122 pounds, and Julianne Leperu. But Finnegan's Wake holds on to take the photo by a head. The first stakes victory for Finnegan's Wake, who snaps a two-year, 13-race losing streak. Time of the race, 2.05-2. The Dale Romans trainee has just missed on a couple of occasions, but he's seen second in the Grade 1 Secretariat Stakes as a three-year-old and in the Grade 2 Bowling Green Handicap last year. The five-year-old horse by Powers Court was bred in Kentucky by Jerry Crawford. Finnegan's Wake has earned $605,000 for Donegal Racing. Next from Arlington Park, the Grade 3 Stars and Stripes Stakes at a mile and a half on turf. Sun Tracer at 8 to 5, a slight favorite over the Pizza Man. Again, here's John G. Dooley. Three quarters went in a flat 121. The Pizza Man calling the shots as they go back to where they started in the Stars and Stripes. It is the Pizza Man out in front trying to make all here. The Pizza Man now a Prado Olay. Ratcheting up the pressure on the Pizza Man with three furlongs to go. Olympic Thunder being asked to quicken. Seton Hall is saving ground in fourth. Dreams cut short fifth but coming under a ride as they round the far turn. Then Moro tapped toward the inside Sun Tracer. We trail back to Dado here. Outpaced Bubba's big show. Now as they come toward the top of the stretch. It's the Pizza Man. Oprado Wale. And on the outside Olympic Thunder. Moro tapped down the center of the course. Dreams cut short has the white blinkers. Seton Hall and Sun Tracer switched out. They're in the final furlong. The Pizza Man. Still finding for the Royal Giroux. O'Connor will lay trying hard. They gained by Sun Tracer. It's the Pizza Man. The Pizza Man delivered in Chicago style in the Stars and Stripes. Nine to five, second choice, the Pizza Man. The front running winner by half a length over long shot O'Prado Olay. Another graded six victory for Florent Giroux. Time of the race, 233 and three. After finishing third in this race last year, the Pizza Man has rolled off four consecutive stakes wins. However, this was his first graded stakes victory. The Illinois bred five-year-old gelding by English Channel is seven for 10 over the Arlington turf course. The Pizza Man has earned nearly $500,000 racing for his breeder, Midwest Thoroughbreds Incorporated. Roger Bruggeman trains the winner. The Pizza Man paid $560 to win and is the Malone's favorite of the week, presented by Malone's, Lexington's favorite steakhouse. To Beaumont Park for another turf marathon, the Grade 2 Bowling Green Handicap. Ground Dewar, the 3-5 to five favorite, Tom Durkin picks up the call. And the rough. Over at the inside, the Hangover Kid and the Horvat Clan. And right next to the Horvat Clan, it's Boisterous. Grandeur's come up for Sky Blazer has reined in immediately and reflecting has been taken to the inside quickly by Rod Ortiz Jr. as they make this long run of better than a quarter mile to the first turn. They're just galloping in the nascent stages here 
And as expected, Horvath Clan is the leader. Horvath Clan in front, and he waltzes through an opening quarter on the straight here in 25 and 3 fifth seconds. Boyce wrists alongside, and then Grander tips to the outside, moving into the turn at the hedge. It's hangover kid. Sky Blazer is well in hand, and the early trailer reflecting, just loping along. So they make their way around the first turn, and it is Horvath Clan, the controlling speed here, if you can call it speed. They're just moving at a very easy gallop here and 51 and four for the first half mile. So there's a mile remaining as they make that turn into the back stretch. Horvat clan, boisterous, hangover kid. Grandeur covered up nicely and behind boisterous. Sky Blazer still under a good hold at the back of the pack and reflecting still conserved and just moving easily while six links from the lead. And an uncontested leader here has been Horvat clan through three quarters of a mile in 17 and two. So the halfway through the race, Horvat Clan and positions have been relatively unchanged here. Boisterous has been second throughout. Hangover Kid third with five furlongs remaining now. Grander continues in a steady gallop, and he's been sheltered the whole way by Boisterous. Then Sky Blazer in a little bit tight there, Sky Blazer. Reflecting now, gets a gentle reminder with a half mile to go. Tempo starting to quicken now as they round the far turn. Horvat Clan, boisterous coming at him, and Grander is produced on the outside. Grander has come off cover, three furlongs from the line. Hangover Kid's been saving ground every step of the way, and he's right in behind Horvat Clan. Then reflecting was outside of Sky Blazer. A tight pack that will turn for home here for the final quarter mile, and Grandier comes roaring up on the outside. Grander now takes the lead, but reflecting is cut loose. And Boisterous is battling on. And Sky Blazer comes on the scene here. Hangover Kid down toward the rail. Grandeur narrowly. Boisterous. Hangover Kid on the inside. Sky Blazer and reflecting. It's going to be a very tight finish after a mile and a half. And it's a photo finish. And let's take another look at that photo finish. It's the favorite Grandeur trying to maintain the lead under 115 pounds in Joel Rosario. But 9-2 Hangover Kid has taken over along the rail, toting 115 pounds in Jose Lascano. And Hangover Kid gets up to take the photo by a head. The New York bred turf veteran records his first graded six victory, time of the race 228 flat. Third in the grade one United Nations stakes a year ago, Hangover Kid just missed in his latest, finishing a closing second in the grade two Monmouth stakes. The six-year-old horse by Lemon Drop Kid was bred in New York by Steve Taglienti. Trained by Jason Service, Hangover Kid has earned $625,000 for four tag stable. Coming up, a former claimer becomes a grade one winner. Time now for the feature race of the week presented by Keeneland, investing in racing's future since 1936. Phillies and mares in the Grade 1 Delaware Handicap. Princess of Silmar, the 1-5 to five favorite. Here's the call by John Curran. And they're off in the Grade 1 Delaware Handicap. Off the shoot, Bel Galante to the inside, Flash American and Molly Morgan, all three across the track as Princess of Silmar trying to find a spot up on the outside, hasn't found one yet. Brian's Jewel and toward the inside, Gamay Noir, as they come down the stretch the first time, and it's not really that much of a tempo so far. Bel Galante, Jose Ortiz has that one throttled down. Flash American is up the challenge, followed by Molly Morgan, who's racing wide. Brian's Jewel has the inside tracked on Princess of Silmar and four lengths further back to the late running Gamay Noir. Opening quarter went in 24 and two, much to the liking of Jose Ortiz and Bel Galante, who leads it by two over Flashy American. Brian's Jewel hugs that rail. Molly Morgan up there, still three wide on the outside. Princess of Silmar between horses and still four lengths to Gamay Noir. Opening half in 49 and two. Very easy tempo being set by Bel Galante and Ortiz. Flash American is right there in second. Then three across the track. Princess of Silmar is sandwiched on the inside. Brian's Jewel up on the outside. Molly Morgan still about five and a half lengths further back to Gamay Noir as they make their way down the Delaware backstretch. Just over a half mile to go. Bel Galante being nursed along. Flash American. Brian's Jewel. Princess of Silmar. Castellano yet to let that one go. On the outside, it's Molly Morgan and seven. 
seven lengths further back to Gamay Noir. The six in a comfortable one thirteen and three. Belle Galante, flashy American. Now the princess begins the move. Princess of Silmar, Castellanos asking for something. Moves up between horses, but Belle Galante and flashy American still have plenty left with a quarter to go. Princess of Silmar needs some racing room. Has to kick it in as they turn for home. Belle Galante, Jose Ortiz, flashy American. Princess of Silmar to the outside. She's trying to kick it in. Belle Galante may have stolen this race. She's in front by two and a half by three. Flashy American, Princess of Silmar and Gamay Noir. An upset here. Belle Galante will win the Delaware Handicap. Princess of Silmar has to settle for second. Flashy American third. Gamay Noir fourth. Reform claimer Bell Galante sets all the fractions to defeat odds on favorite Princess of Silmar by two and three quarter lengths. Jose Ortiz aboard the Keeneland Sells graduate in 201 flat, a 107 Briz speed rating. The first stakes victory for Bell Galante, who has changed hands six times during her 41 race career. Most recently, she was claimed for $35,000 by the partnership of Michael Dobb, Bethlehem Stables, and Gary Iskweth, and transferred to trainer Rudy Rodriguez. After winning her first three starts off the claim, she finished a close fifth in the grade one Ogden Phipps Stakes. The five-year-old mare by aftermarket was bred in Kentucky by Pam and Martin Wygod. Bell Galante has earned $866,000. The future grade one winner was consigned by Lane's End to the 2010 Keeneland September Yearling Sale, where she was purchased by Mike Pewich for $10,000. Delaware handicap winner Bell Galante, the Keeneland Sales Graduate of the Week. We'll see you next week here on Thoroughbred Week. Thoroughbred Week has been presented by Actostatin, Adena Springs, Bloodstock Research, Breeders' Cup, Claiborne Farm, EmpireCityBets.com, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Keeneland, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, Paul Miller Ford, Quillen Leather and Tack, Shadwell Farm, Spendthrift Farm, Three Chimneys Farm, and Windstar Farm. Online at TBreadWeek.com.